Welcome to part two. This part we'll be covering how to render out an animation and compile it in the sequencer. We're going to be rendering each frame as a separate image so that this way we have more control over the quality if we instead of just exporting straight to video. Also it's resumable unlike a video straight video render would be. Um, so I have a, a scene set up here called a bouncy. It's just a basic ball animation. Pretty classic is like a first type of animation thing. Um, so what we're going to do is render it out as a uh, Tarja raw format. This way uh, we have a pretty good um, like uh, quality to go off of instead of having you know JPEGs or something like that. You could use PNGs but um, again that has a little bit of lossiness to it but Tarja hardly has any type of artifacts in it or anything like that so I'm going to uh, I already have all the uh, render settings set up here so I'm ready to render out the entire sequence just hit animation and uh, it'll render out Okay, so now that the sequence is done and it's all rendered out, we can move on to actually compiling it into a video. Before I do that, um, I want to explain how to actually resume a render. So say you're rendering it and you stop it mid-frame and you're rendering out to an image sequence. You can pause it, make note of which frame it's on, like it, say this was frame 22. If you pause it during that frame, um, go over here and uh, just retype in 22 and then it'll resume from there and uh, render out the rest of the image later when you want to finish up the sequence. Anyways, um, to compile it, um, we're just going to open up a new file, go over 25 frames per second because that's what had it in the video. Um, reset this to 51 and We'll set the output directory to wherever you want it to be. We'll just name this final. And uh, so now we're going to add in all of the images into the uh, sequencer or video editor. And uh, it's advisable to have a separate window open for the render properties. They don't have one in here, which is alludes me why they don't have one, but uh, just shift click on one of the corners of the windows and it'll make a new one. You can just mess around with that. It already has all the uh, same settings from last time, but um, let's see. All you want, really want to pay attention to is this area right here. Um, expand it out a little bit. Okay. So these are the different formats. I'm going to go through each one separately. Okay, so AVI JPEG sounds exactly like what it is. It's just a video file with JPEG compression. Um, AVI RAW is AVI without any compression, so you have a full uncompressed frame. It's usually good for uh, rendering it out uh, in a different editor, like if you need to port it over to Premiere or something like that, you'll probably want to use this format. Um, frame server is just for render farms, we won't go over that. H.264 is one of my favorites for rendering out a, a, a final result, but uh, Blender is kind of goofy in the way it does this thing. Okay, so whenever you f select one of these formats, it'll open up this encoding thing, but it won't set it to the correct settings initially make sure you go to presets and then hit whatever type so that matches this type. Um, so here we have H.264, 6000 bitrate is alright. This minimum value is the minimum bitrate that it'll go, so if like your screen is completely black it can go down to like one bitrate or whatever the lowest possible value is, and then if 
it's like full of noise and there's like separate colors in each pixel then it'll go to 9000 um, but audio codec we'll go over that last um, the other format is MPEG which is sort of just like a container it's uh, you can select different types I think the it doesn't have a preset in here but uh, you can just select MP, uh, MPEG 4 it's the largest of all the formats I think and I usually don't use it um, just because the other ones are smaller okay so this one uh, OGG Theora is a uh, open source like really awesome type of uh, format it saves out to a dot OGG file different from an AVI file which is what these two save out to usually um, but what's nice about it is that it has uh, it's sort of like an in-between of XVID and H.264 and it uses a uh, open source codec and usually it goes with Vorbis which is another open source audio codec um, but the uh, advantage to it is that it has a really good compression algorithm and you can't really I can't even distinguish the difference between this one and H.264 at at least 6000 bit rate. Um, the only disadvantage is that uh, Windows Media Player and QuickTime cannot play this file. Uh, what I would usually advise you to do with it is upload it to YouTube because it works perfectly on YouTube if you just upload the straight OGG file. I've already tested it out and make sure it works. Um, the last one is XVID. The upside of XVID is that it's very compatible with lots of different formats. You want to, again, hit preset XVID. Um, and usually you want to do, I think you can only do MP3 with it, um, but it is very uh, compatible with different things. I actually use this format to uh, go in between Camtasia Studio because that's the only format out of all of these that it actually supports. But um, the only thing I don't like about it is that the compression can get really nasty, like really blocky compared to uh, H.264. So to recap, usually you want to either use H.264 or OG Theora if you're going to upload straight from the sequencer file that you export. If you're going to go in between a different program, either use AVI RAW or XVID. In this example, we're going to use XVID because I need to put it into Camtasia. Um, so the audio codex, um, Vorbis is awesome. It, I can't really dis distinguish the uh, quality between the two, at least at this frame rate or bit rate. I mean, um, Vorbis is a little bit larger than MP3, but it is open source and lots of people like it, I guess, uh, because Blender is open source, it just seems to go along with each other. But MP3 is, again, good quality. It is smaller file size than Vorbis, but it is patented and it's not open source and everybody's not many people like it because of that, but I don't really uh, give a care about whether it's patented or not, as long as it sounds alright. Um, just stick with 192 usually for videos. It's a good stereo um, bitrate and to be honest, if you up it to like 320 you can't really tell the difference unless you have like thousands of dollars of studio equipment with like kicking headphones and all that stuff but anyways so in order to get the actual image sequence into blender I'm going to need to go over to add image go over to your directory where you have all of the frames saved out and just hit a and then add image strip It'll, uh, select all of them then add it in so uh, you're going to want to position it so that the first frame is lined up like that and once you have that all set up you can just render it on out uh, so here we go and just going over everything one more time Next make sure you have the correct directory um, and you can name it whatever you want to. It's going to have an extension on the end uh, for the uh, number of frames it has in the actual video, which is nice if you're doing multiple iterations of something. Um, 
steps, but it can be annoying in other cases. But if you just hit animation, then it'll go through all of these frames and render out each individual one and compile it into a video, which is pretty nice, I think. It allows you to give, it gives you a lot of control over the sequence. But one thing you want to note is that this image that's here is not what it looks like in the actual video. It's only processing it and then exporting it. Um, so it's recommended that you view the file afterwards just to make sure that it's playing correctly and there's no weird artifacts or anything like that. So it should get to 51. That means it's done. It'll give you the uh, all the statistics up there if you want to view that. But now we're going to look at the actual video file. So, oh, it's a short, pretty short video. So, let me size this down and set it on repeat. So, you'll see that it kind of, you'll see that with XVID, you get this really weird compression at the very start and very end of the video. And that's what I don't like about it. Well, more so at the start, actually. It kind of, like, it goes from like a few bit rate to the maximum and then adjust for it because the way video compression works is that it calculates the uh, in between the frames and sees which ones are staying the same which blocks of color are exactly the same and just says okay this block is co of color is the same instead of saying oh this pixel this pixel this pixel this pix pixel is the same color basically so that's a little uh, brief description of how video codecs work. Um, so let's compare some of the uh, sizes of the uh, movie files next just to give you an idea of what the variance is between them. So I'm going to show you a demo clip from the movie Press Pause Play. It's registered under Creative Commons so I can reuse it and show you guys. But I'm going to show you the clip and then compare the different same clip with different uh, codecs and see the file size. Um, just give me a second to load up that video. I think from a lot of people's perspective is the fact that they knocked the zeros off the price tag to the point where a lot of people have access to making very high quality motion picture images. That's, that's the biggest thing. I mean, you can always buy a cheaper camera, but I don't think there's ever been a camera at that price range that is generated the kind of images that it does. And that's, the, I think, the most revolutionary part about it. OK, so each of these files was rendered out with the same bit rate um, with audio and video. Only the codecs are different, so um, there's no variable within that. Um, H.264 with MP3 obviously is a little bit smaller than with Vorbis, or I should say Vorbis, not OGG. but. Um, and then here's the MPEG, which is the largest, of course. This is the OGG Theora, which is smaller than the H.264, which is nice, um, but has the same kind of quality, I think. And the XVID, which had all the same settings, but was the smallest, but it does have that weird artifacting at the beginning, which I really don't like. Um, but that's about it for this uh, tutorial, explaining all the different uh, codecs and things, and uh, how to render out a proper image sequence and all that stuff. Hope you found it useful, and uh, if you did, leave a like or favorite, subscribe, whatever, um, if you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, see you later.